Hello all, welcome back to Introduction to Atmospheric Dynamics, Chapter 3, Applications of the Basic Equations. In this section we'll be talking about vertical motion, and in particular vertical motion and pressure coordinates. At the start of this section we'll discuss how we can relate the vertical pressure velocity to the vertical velocity and height coordinates, and then talk about two different ways that we can use in order to actually diagnose the vertical velocity and the pressure coordinate system. Recall that the dynamical equations and pressure coordinates are given by the six equations on this slide. We have a momentum equation describing the evolution of the horizontal velocity, a hydrostatic relationship which describes the vertical structure of the atmosphere, a continuity equation which describes conservation of mass, a thermodynamic equation which describes conservation of energy, ideal gas law which relates the three thermodynamic quantities, and material derivative which describes the Lagrangian reference frame in terms of the Eulerian reference frame. The connection between W and omega can emerges naturally from the usage of the material derivative. By definition, recall that omega is the material derivative of the pressure with respect to time. Expanding this using the definition of the material derivative gives a term for the Eulerian change in pressure with respect to time minus a term associated with advection of pressure. If we then apply hydrostatic balance to this expression, namely dy p dy z equals negative rho g, this allows us to convert the last term in this expansion into a term that contains the vertical velocity w. Using the geostrophic decomposition, that is decomposing the horizontal wind into both geostrophic and ageostrophic components, then allows us to expand the horizontal velocity terms in this expression in terms of that geostrophic and ageostrophic flow. Then applying the definition of the geostrophic wind allows us to actually eliminate the geostrophic wind from this expression. This is because we actually have a, cr a cross cancellation of the pr horizontal pressure derivatives that emerge in this equation set. This leaves us with a relationship between the vertical pressure velocity and the vertical uh, velocity and height coordinates given by the line below. That is, we basically have that the vertical pressure velocity is equal to a term related to the change in pressure with respect to time in the Eulerian frame, a term which is associated with the advection of pressure by the ageostrophic flow, and a term which is associated with the vertical velocity in height coordinates. The next question is, what are the scales associated with these terms? A proper scale analysis will allow us to potentially eliminate terms which are small compared to the others. Using a typical scale analysis analogous to that of what we performed in Chapter 2 of these lectures, that is using large-scale mid-latitude storm systems in order to guide typical scales associated with the problem, we can plug these into our, uh, set our equation from the last slide and arrive at scales associated with each term. The local change in pressure term has scales of u delta p over l, or about 10 to the minus 2 pascals per second. The pressure advection term by the ageostrophic wind has a scale associated with it of u delta p over l, which we multiply by 0.1 because we know that the ageostrophic velocity for large-scale systems is relatively small compared to the geostrophic flow. That is, it tends to be about one order of magnitude less than the geostrophic velocity. Consequently, we are free in order to multiply it by this scaling factor. This then gives us a scale of 10 to the minus 3 associated with the ageostrophic advection term. The vertical velocity term, which appears last in this expression, has units of w, g, rho. Recall that we use w uh, as a typical vertical velocity scale. g is about 10 meters per second squared, and rho is about 1 kilogram per meter cubed. Plugging in these quantities gives 10 to the minus 1 pascals per second. Comparing the scales associated with each of these terms, it is clear that the dominant term in uh, diagnosing the vertical pressure velocity is then given by the last term in this expression, which is then related to the vertical velocity and height coordinates. So in general, from scale analysis, we can use this approximation in order to estimate um, the value of omega given the vertical velocity and height coordinates, or vice versa. So how do we diagnose the vertical pressure velocity? 
Well, if we go back to the set of equations in pressure coordinates that describe the dynamics of the atmosphere, we'll note that there are only two equations in which omega actually appears. Consequently, in order to calculate the value of omega, we will need to rely on one of these two equations. Each equation actually leads to a different diagnostic method for omega. Let's first look at what is known as the kinematic method. The kinematic method uses the continuity equation in order to diagnose the value of omega. Starting with the continuity equation and applying the geostrophic decomposition, that is expanding the vector horizontal velocity in terms of geostrophic and ageostrophic components, and then applying geostrophic balance, leads us to the equation at the bottom of this slide. Note that if f is approximately constant, then the first two terms of this expression actually cancel with one another. This is because geostrophic flow is almost entirely um, divergence free. That is, if you take the divergence of the geostrophic flow speed, you actually tend to get a value which is very, very close to zero, where the only discrepancy occurs because of the latitudinal variation in the Coriolis parameter f. For a constant Coriolis parameter, as is often done in some atmospheric science studies, we actually get a perfectly divergence free geostrophic velocity on pressure surfaces. That leaves us with two terms remaining in this expression that relate the vertical derivative of omega with respect to pressure to the horizontal divergence of the ageostrophic winds. So what does this expression say? Well, it says that if the ageostrophic wind is converging, that is, if you have horizontal flow which is moving towards a central point, that will tend to induce a rising motion above that point. This is because you have converging air, which is then forced to go either upward or downward away from that point. So this makes sense for an incompressible flow. Um, for the case of a divergent flow, that is, if we have that grad sub p dot u a is positive, then the right hand side of this expression will be negative. And so this corresponds to sinking motion above the point at which the uh, equation is being applied. That is, if you have diverging flow, air is being taken away from a central point, and that air must be replaced from somewhere. And so in order to replace that air, we tend to pull air from above and pull air from below in order to replace the air at the central location. Starting with the initial equation that we had in terms of the vector velocity u, we can actually integrate this over pr a pressure interval between p1 and p2, p1 being the lower pressure and p2 being the upper pressure. Um, that then allows us to write the omega uh, using fundamental theorem of calculus, we can then expand the integral of the derivative on the left-hand side and write this as a difference between the pressure at the upper and lower levels. Consequently, we observe that the change in omega between these two levels is related to the pressure difference between these two levels times the divergence or the mean divergence of the horizontal wind through this region. Consequently, using the kinematic method, we can diagnose the vertical pressure velocity at a particular point using this main layer horizontal divergence. However, if the flow is very close to geostrophic balance, then this divergence tends to be very small, and we end up having a cancellation of two terms which have approximately equal magnitude to one another. As a result, it makes it very difficult in order to accurately calculate the divergence of the flow for near geostrophic flow. This tends to be the case because vertical velocities tend to be very small relative to horizontal velocities. Therefore, whenever we have small values in evaluating these horizontal wind speeds, they can lead to very large values in the estimates of omega. Consequently, in practice, the kinematic method tends not to be used because it is very inaccurate. This allows us to turn then to our second expression, for that includes the omega term. Starting with the thermodynamic equation, we can derive a method for diagnosing the vertical pressure velocity known as the adiabatic method. If we assume that diabatic heating is small, we can set the right-hand side of this expression to zero and rearrange the expression for omega. This then allows us to write the vertical pressure velocity in terms of the inverse stability parameter, 
and a term which is associated with the Lagrangian rate of change of temperature. This includes both the Eulerian change in temperature at a point and horizontal advection of temperature. Consequently, we can relate the vertical pressure velocity to horizontal advection of temperature. If the local time tendency of the temperature field is negligible, that is, if we assume that the temperature is kept at a steady state, then we can rearrange this equation and write it as omega equals negative of negative uh dot grad t. Note that this negative uh dot grad t term is exactly horizontal advection of temperature divided by the stability parameter. If the atmosphere is stable, then the stability parameter will be positive. So consider the two different types of temperature advection we could potentially have. If we have warm air advection, then we tend to have omega, which is negative. Here, W, which is approximately equal to negative omega divided by rho g, will then be positive. So warm air advection corresponds to the case of ascending air. This tends to make sense, because if you think about warm air moving into a region, that will then cause the temperature of that region to increase. Consequently, the layer thickness must increase. An increasing layer thickness will then be associated with an increased pressure, or sorry, a decreased pressure associated with a potential geopotential surface on the cap of that region. Consequently, as the geopotential surface is pushed upwards, this will be associated with ascending air. On the other hand, if we have cold air advection, then you have colder air moving into a region, leading to lower temperatures, hence a thinner fluid column. That thinner fluid column then pulls the geopotential surface above the layer downward, leading to a thinner region and consequently descending air. The adiabatic method is based on temperature advection, which tends to be dominated by the geostrophic wind, which is large, and hence tends to be a reasonable way to estimate local vertical velocities when advection is strong. In fact, we can very easily use this method in order to assess vertical velocity simply looking at typical weather maps. So, let's try to do that. Remember that vertical motion on large scales is directly related to convergence and divergence of the ageostrophic wind, and it's also related to temperature advection. So, let's look at a couple weather maps over the next two slides and see if you can identify regions where we have rising motion. Here is 300 millibar wind speed given on, uh, on this plot. You've seen this plot earlier in one of the earlier lectures. It is associated with an upper level trop tropospheric jet where we have sufficiently large wind speeds. The warmer regions on this plot denote those faster wind speeds. Here we have the 850 millibar temperature on this plot. Here the colors denote the temperature and the wind vectors are superimposed. So based on the information you've gleaned from this lecture, do you know what you'll be looking for in order to identify regions of rising motion? So recall the two methods we, have, we considered involved looking for divergence in the flow and looking for advection of temperature. Arguably, it is very difficult in order to actually assess regions on this plot where we have divergence or convergence associated with the flow. It's not obvious in any particular region that we have wind vectors which are pointing into one another. However, close consideration, particularly in regions where you have geopotential lines which tend to converge towards one another, that is, move from regions where they're widely spaced to regions where they have a much thinner spacing, are indicative of converging flow. However, it's much easier on this plot in order to identify regions of temperature advection. If you look on this plot for regions where geostrophic wind vectors are pointed perpendicular to lines of constant temperature, particularly in regions where those geostrophic wind vectors point from warm temperatures to cool temperatures, these are regions where you will have warm air advection and consequently will be able to identify rising motion. It's very difficult in order to actually measure vertical velocities in the real atmosphere, so we tend to look for proxies in order to represent rising motion. A key proxy that's typically considered is usually precipitation. Precipitation usually occurs whenever you have rising motion, cooling of air parcels at higher altitude, and consequently condensation of water that leads to precipitation. So let's look on this plot and look on our next plot showing precipitation in order to try to identify regions of rising motion. 
So as you compare these two regions, I want you to look very closely where you see uh, warm air advection from the previous slide. In particular, draw your attention to the left-hand side of the plot near the 1440 uh, contour. Immediately to the bottom left of that, you actually see very strong precipitation, which is indicative of rising motion below it. Consequently, we would say that warm air advection in this region is a trigger for uh, rising motion.